Project Maths development team, what we do is we support teachers in their continuing professional development. And the professional development for the teachers commenced in 2009. Hands up who picked that one in any of their five. This year we visited a junior cycle class in Carndonna in Donegal and we also followed a class in Carlo and this was a senior cycle class. So if it was vertical, could we get a slope of a vertical line? No. Mm -hmm. Why not? Can anyone remember the reason for that? Mm -hmm. Can't find 10 and 80 degrees. Excellent answer. At the school visits we look at the whole area of the use of calculator in the classroom. We look at the teacher handbooks, the teaching and learning plans and ICT among other things. Feedback from teachers at the workshops overwhelmingly has been positive and enthusiastic and on the website you can see teachers who have persisted in using the methodologies you know they're really delighted when they see the improvement in their students learning experience of mathematics. I see the weaker kids catching up especially the ones who hadn't done project maths before they're a little bit less self-confident than the others and a little bit aware of their I suppose lack of ability to understand uh, the project maths methodologies but I think that's coming on and that gap is is definitely decreasing as time goes by. For project maths to work teachers must be in the vanguard. The resources alone will not create change. They must be used by teachers in the classroom. They have to be proactive in finding a balance in the classroom between different styles of teaching and they have to be flexible. What I mean by that is that teachers by and large to date have used a transmission style of teaching and that can be a very dynamic way of learning maths if it is well planned and structured. But they also need to employ other pedagogical skills in the classroom where the students learn by questioning, they learn by asking what if and what if not type of questions and there's greater discussion of ideas in the classroom and communication among the students. Did you just add them all up and divide them by 50? We multiplied the frequency by the number. So you did the frequency by the, the number of pets, was it? Yeah. And why would you do that? Because that tells you how many pets there were. I find Project Math easier because uh, you can discuss answers with your classmates while as before you had to figure things out yourself. I think we'd all acknowledge that this will take time and that teachers who have persisted, they're the ones who have actually seen the greatest change and that has been our feedback from the teachers in the project schools and also from teachers nationwide. You know, it takes time and often you try something out and you may need to refine it and the next day try something else. I think there, there's nothing puts them outside their comfort zone anymore. I think no matter what I throw at them, they're willing to have a go now. Whereas before, no matter what was new, it was very uncomfortable for them. It took them a while to get used to it. Whereas now they know to expect anything and I think they're very open to that. And it, because they're more comfortable with it, they pick it up a lot faster and they're learning a lot faster because there's a lot more wider scope in what you can do with them when you're using the various mediums that are available. The feedback from the students on their experiences of Project Maths can be listened to on our website. What we've done on, uh, there during our visits to the schools in Donegal and Carlow, we've allowed the students to speak for themselves and we've given them their own voice. And again, their feedback on their experiences have been very, very positive. Project Maths is easier than the, um, the way we used to do Maths 4 because it's more um, interactive and it's easier to learn it. Um, and it's used in more kind of real life situations, so it's easier to apply it. What we're going to look at with you is an activity that you could do with a first year class who've never done any constructions before to justify constructions to them, or you could do it with second years, or you could do it with fifth years. So this year we delivered workshop five and six, which is out of a series of ten workshops. And workshop five, we looked at planning for teaching and learning. We looked at how to teach statistics efficiently and effectively in the classroom using census at school as a resource. And we also considered how teachers should plan and sequence their work on a daily basis. And for that, the team have developed teacher handbooks. And these are based on the experiences of the teachers in the project schools. 
Now, what the teacher handbooks do is they allow the teachers to plan on a daily basis. They place the student at the centre of the classroom and they enhance all of the resources that are readily available for teachers. We also at workshop five looked at how to introduce algebra to first years and we considered all of the misconceptions students have in relation to algebra. So when we do the sums, we do them with the models or the tiles and it's really kind of getting the students to call out colours for a while instead of the X's and then when we show them the answer, all of a sudden they realise instead of it being blue or red, it's X squared or XY and that there is a difference. In workshop six, we explored geometry and we put it into context and we looked at real life applications and using a rich task, we considered all of the different connections within strand two, which is based on geometry and trigonometry. This is four, should have one, two, three. Join them. Oh, yes. Join them. And this one should have one, two, three, and then you're finished. So every point joins every other point. The teaching and learning plans and other material that are freely available online through our website have been tried and tested in many of the project schools. A lot of thought and research has been put into developing these resources by the team and, you know, as I said, teachers who have persisted in using them have seen improvements in the classroom. As a teacher, you're more aware very quickly of who's doing well and who's struggling because it's very easy to see who's not getting on, whereas with the notes and just questions, they could be just copying. We also support teachers by providing modular courses and these have been developed in collaboration with the National Centre for Excellence for Mathematics, Science, Teaching and Learning in the University of Limerick. These courses are delivered by our group of local facilitators and we have a team of approximately 36 of these and they're developed or they are delivered through the local education network and teachers who have attended both workshops and the modular courses have been very enthusiastic. We also support teachers through online resources and we have to date in collaboration with the NCTE delivered on all aspects of Project Maths ICT courses and these are all available on our website. This year the Project Maths development team will continue to support teachers in the phased introduction of Project Maths. We will be steadily moving forward this year with workshop 7 and 8 and considering the strand 5 which deals with functions. We will also introduce this year a further modular course in spring of 2013 and again this year we will be offering school visits during term 3. To evade of such a visit if a school hasn't done so already, simply have to contact the administrator of the project here in Drumcondra Education Centre. It's more hands-on. Everybody gets involved, and even the quiet people that normally don't answer or answer. We do believe that if teachers tap into the resources and use them in the classroom, that we will equip our students to become higher achievers and problem solvers for the future.